Welcome to our parish Eucharist in St. Mary of the Cross Parish, Mordialic and Aspendale. We begin our celebration today by acknowledging the original owners of the land on which we gather, the Boon people of the Kulin Nation, a people who have lived in and loved this land for generations. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is Good Shepherd Sunday, when we are asked to pray for vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. We are used to thinking of Jesus as a good shepherd, leading his flock to safety. In today's gospel, he also refers to himself as the gate of the sheepfold. It is through him that we reach the safety of life with his Father and our salvation. Please join in our opening song, The Lord is My Shepherd. Welcome everyone to our Mass as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you and uh, great to see you joining in on our online Mass and thanks for taking the time to allow this Mass to be part of your connection with the parish and with our wider church community. As we heard Good Shepherd Sunday is an invitation to reflect on our relationship with Jesus. And the image of recognising the shepherd's voice is one that invites us to tune into God's voice. A bit like an old wireless or radio, now I'm giving away my age, whereby you heard that horrible static noise until you dialed into the correct frequency to hear that really crisp sound. Well, with our time in ISO, can we see this as an opportunity to have the static removed and the fine tuning fine tuned? Taking this time in prayer can only enhance our tuning in. 
This Sunday also, as we heard, is Vocation Sunday. And knowing the voice of Jesus and coming to know how we are to live our lives as his followers, whether married, single, priest, deacon or religious. Let's pause for a moment and let's settle ourselves as we continue with our Mass. And so for the times we've been reluctant to tune in, we ask for God's forgiveness. And so we are called by St. Peter to repent and be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, you guide us along the right path. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you walk with us in the valley of darkness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you anoint us and prepare a banquet for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's join in praying our Gloria together as we say, Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We listen to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd with a loud voice. The whole house of Israel can be certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hearing this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, What must we do, brothers? You must repent, Peter answered, and every one of you must be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise was, that was made is for you and your children, and for all those who are far away, for all those whom the Lord our God will call to himself. He spoke to them for a long time using many arguments, and he urged them, save yourselves from this perverse generation. They were convinced by his arguments, and they accepted what he said and were baptised. That very day, about 3,000 were added to their number. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near Lord. restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. 
Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St Peter. The merit in the sight of God is in bearing punishment patiently when you are punished after doing your duty. This, in fact, is what you were all called to do because Christ suffered for you and left an example for you to follow the way he took. He had not done anything wrong and there was no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and he did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats but he put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our faults in his body on the cross so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds, you have been healed. You have gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. We welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I tell you most solemnly, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but gets in some other ways a thief and a brigand. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in. The sheep hear his voice. One by one, he calls his own sheep and leads them out. When he has brought out his flock, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They will follow a stranger, but run away from him. They do not recognise the voice of strangers. Jesus told them this parable, but they failed to understand what he meant by telling it to them. So Jesus spoke to them again. I tell you most solemnly, I am the gate of the sheepfold. All others who have come are thieves and brigands, but the sheep took no notice of them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be safe. He will go freely in and out and be sure of finding pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that you may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel of the Lord. When we talk about uh, shepherding and farming, we imagine that being a farmer here in Australia. Our picture, our image is generally that of sheep stations, which are usually hundreds and thousands of acres. And the livestock, again, in the thousands. And the way the managing of the livestock is generally could be even motorbikes or helicopters. That's sort of some images of farming in Australia. But I want you to put that aside and think back of different sort of farming. I was very lucky to walk the Camino in Spain back in 2013. And as you go through lovely towns, these tiny towns, you're literally going through people's livelihoods too. Because I remember going through a farm and it was really the farm had caressed the main street of the town. And there was the farmer in the morning and he's herding his cattle, taking them out of the barn and over to the paddocks. Something that's been done for centuries. Also, I remember being in the Holy Land and doing some field trips that took us out into the, um, into the outer regions and seeing these shepherds, as imagined in our scriptures today, with their sheep. I want you to have that image 
of a first century Palestinian shepherd still happens in the Holy Land. That's the gospel image that I want you to hold because back in those days, for a family, sheep were like a bank account. It was their security. It was their superannuation, their long service leave. It was everything. It was their livelihood. The sheep provided wool and and meat and milk. It was such an important, important part of these families' livelihoods. Now, if you are fairly poor, you as the family, uh, as, the, as the, um, the head of the family, you were the shepherd. You literally looked after your sheep. Now, if you are rich, yes, you hired a shepherd to do that work. But you entrusted to that shepherd your livelihood, you know, and you trusted that shepherd. So as a shepherd, you would take your sheep and you might have to walk for kilometres to find some grazing area for the sheep to be to be able to be fed and to find some water, which could have been scarce, especially in these parts of the world. You would walk for miles. You may not go back to your home. So therefore, at night time, how did you protect your sheep? Because this is when the sheep were most vulnerable. They could be um, attacked by predators. Well, in some parts of the Holy Land, they created a sheepfold. Now, an image will come up on the screen now for you to have a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. I had one opening and you led the sheep into this protected area and therefore the shepherd became the gate. As you can see in this image, just lying across the entrance to the sheepfold. At times, many shepherds with their flocks of sheep would go into this sheepfold and the shepherds would take turns through the night to block the gate, to protect their sheep. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, sheep all look the same. So in the morning, how do you, you know, retain your own sheep? Well, because you as shepherd spent so much time with your sheep, they recognised your voice. You would literally call them and they would come and follow you and not the other shepherd. It's a beautiful image that we take into this gospel today, which really tells us a lot about who our God is for us and how we are called to be with our God. Because in some ways, following Jesus is not a a religious ideology or a philosophy or a system of ethics. It's about relationship. Now, today's gospel actually follows that beautiful gospel story of that encounter with Jesus and the blind man who Jesus cures on a Sabbath day. That was fourth Sunday of Lent. We heard that beautiful gospel. Now, this encounter of the blind man and Jesus throws the Pharisees into a spin because Jesus challenges the Sabbath laws. He shouldn't have done that. It was considered work. Yet, what's the greater good? And yes, Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets, but he's there to challenge the worldview that the Pharisees have created, which was far from the worldview that God intended. Jesus talks about a God who desires relationship, not temple sacrifice. Jesus tries to make the Pharisees see that he is the good shepherd, the one that's referred to in the Old Testament scriptures that the Pharisees know. Psalm 23, what we said in our responsorial psalm, and Ezekiel 34, the reference being the shepherd fearlessly protecting his sheep. Jesus is trying to tell the Pharisees that he will be the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. But none of this makes sense if the Pharisees don't see religion and their faith from another perspective. They need to get out of their bubble and see that Jesus comes to establish a following that is about relationship, about a God who desperately desires to know us. Well, before the coronavirus isolation, we have seen the world from a certain perspective, haven't we? And what we deemed as normal and expected has been taken away from us for a period of time. It's a bit like a bubble that kept growing with a certain momentum and direction. Well, that bubble has burst. And we now have an opportunity to reflect on the direction we wish life to head towards. Okay, so now it's a temporary bubble 
of isolation that we are living in. And yes, so much has been taken away, like our travel plans that we had for this year, our school holidays that happened recently, very different to other school holidays, the lack of socialising that we're able to do, the loss of work for some of you, change of workplace, and home teaching is a big part of your lives, I'm aware of that. So at the beginning of the year, who would have thought? Well, when we get to the other side, we will be different. We've been forced to see the world from another perspective. And I don't think we want to go back to the other bubble in the same way. So what is it that we wish to embrace in the post-coronavirus world? I'd imagine that as kids resume going back to school, that you'd still want to have this special quality time with your children. Maybe more opportunities to work for home. That flexibility is great. Well, what about Zoom meetings? Zoom is my second best friend now. I'll be over it in a moment, but I think there'll be new opportunities to utilise this particular feature. And what about masses online? Will they continue? Well, we'll wait and see. we wait and see. They might be a combination. Well, coronavirus has forced us to revisit what is important and maybe a chance to strengthen our faith in God. Again, I'd like to reiterate that God did not create the coronavirus. Especially people may think that this was created by God to stop us from life going in an unhealthy direction. No, we have to take responsibility for the path that we were heading towards. But you know what? We have now an opportunity to revisit what is important. Our time in ISO. Time to get to know the shepherd's voice. Time to be open to being led by the good shepherd. Time to strengthen that relationship with Jesus. Okay, our church doors may be locked, but Jesus' voice isn't restricted to a church space. But actually, Jesus' voice may be more audible during this time of ISO. So finally, again, I thank you for tuning into this Mass. But this Mass can only be, can only point you in the direction of our God. And it is after this Mass that we need to continue to tune in to the love that God has for us. The Good Shepherd's love will accompany us towards the greener pastures of the post-coronavirus isolation. We come to this time when we profess our faith and we say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Once again, our hearts burn with faith as we hear the story of our salvation. Let us turn with confidence to the Father, asking help for all our needs. Our prayer is, Risen Jesus, you are the way. Risen Jesus, you are the way. We pray for all members of our parish community who are unable to celebrate the Eucharist together at this time. May we still feel connected to each other through the shared viewing of this celebration. We pray. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, you, you are, are the way. way. We pray for the church. May she always be a gateway to truth, peace and justice for those who are lost, broken or betrayed. We pray. Risen Risen Jesus, Jesus, you are the way. We pray for our world. May governments everywhere work to protect those in greatest need. We pray. Risen Jesus, you are the way. 
We pray for those who are anxious and fearful about life. May they find confidence and courage in Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We pray. Risen Jesus, you are the way. We pray for all who are shepherding us through the current health and economic crisis. May God bless their work as they respond to this emergency with compassion and effective strategies to care for those in need. We pray. Risen Jesus, you are the way. We pray for vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. May they hear God's voice calling them to discern their vocation. We pray. Risen Jesus, you are the way. We pray for all who are ill, including those infected with coronavirus. May our prayers, love and concern help support them at this time. We pray. Risen Jesus, you are the way. We pray for all who have died recently, especially all the victims of COVID-19 throughout the world and for all our family and friends whose anniversaries occur at this time, especially all those listed in our parish bulletin. We pray. Jesus, Jesus you, are you are the way. God, our Father, help us grow through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in openness and generosity, inspired and helped by your Holy Spirit working within us as we make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your, your hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of God's holy church. church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfilment in the reality of the cross and, by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we say together... Holy holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Mary of the Cross, Saint Louis and Saint Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so we come now to this beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us in praying for our daily bread and being people of forgiveness. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment to offer each other a sign of peace to those nearest to you, or just to pray for peace in our hearts, in our country and in our world. So let's offer each other a sign of that peace. And we pray together, Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And at this time I invite you to join in with me this prayer for spiritual communion as we say together, My Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
as though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Like a good shepherd, O God, keep watch over those you have redeemed by the blood of your Son and lead them as your flock into heavenly pastures. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thanks again, everyone, for tuning into uh, this YouTube channel for Mass. Um, thanks for all those comments from last week. They were terrific, really great comments. So have a chance to read those but you might want to put some more comments on this week's mass as well also you may remember at the start of the mass we featured some artwork from some of our children at our schools so the our schools will invite some of the children to present some work that will feature in these youtube mass okay one thing i want to ask are anyone out there celebrating um 63 years of marriage anniversary anyone out there actually i heard that uh, valerie and john sir were celebrating 63 years of marriage on sunday gosh i wonder if they could just step through valerie, can you just step through that screen and come and join us i wonder if that's possible i wonder if that's possible it might have... well there you go here are john and valerie sir who are here with us, who are celebrating 63 years of marriage. Now, I do need to ask you, what is the key ingredient in a long and healthy marriage, Val and John? To me, it's commitment. Commitment, and to John? To me, it's love, trust, and understanding. Love, trust, and understanding. Well, and that's- communication. And communication. And communication. I'm glad that patience isn't in there. That's a good thing, but anyway, well done, Val and John. So could I invite you all to extend an arm of blessing from where you are to pray a blessing over Val and John. And today, as they celebrate 63 years of marriage, this commitment that they made to each other 63 years ago, surrounded by their family and friends. Yes, it's a bit awkward at this time. Maybe the celebrations will be postponed till later, but we are sending them virtual hugs and this blessing over the internet. And we ask the Lord to continue to bless and protect them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And don't run away, Val and John. Just on behalf of this parish community, we love to present you socially distancing. Okay, can't get too close. Okay, and let's give our friends a big round of applause. Thank you, Val and John. No problem. I'm sure that uh, you'd love to um, congratulate Val and John with the comments on this YouTube mass. So please feel free to do so. I'm sure that they'll be checking up on those lovely comments that you'll make to them. So thanks everyone. Thanks for, for signing in, tuning in, and uh, we will see you next time. So have a great week and we'll, we'll see you soon. We have our final blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God always be the source of goodness and strength in our lives. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let's join in our final hymn. 
today. All the ends of the earth, all you creatures of the sea, lift up your eyes to the wonders of the Lord, for the Lord of the earth, the master of the sea, has come with justice for the world. wonders he has done in every age. All the ends of the earth, all you creatures of the sea, lift up your eyes to the wonders of the Lord, for the Lord of the earth, the master of the sea, has come with justice for the Heart, every nation call him Lord. All the ends of the earth, all you creatures of the sea, lift up your eyes to the wonders of the Lord. For the Lord of the earth, the master of the sea, has come with justice for the world. The Lord has made his salvation. Known, faithful to his promises of old.